So my name is Mike Chipman, and I am a member of uh, Steve Ramsey's classes and the private Facebook groups associated with that. And I recently posted a post with my shop that I had uh, built in SketchUp and um, suggested that I may be interested in doing a video and thought, why not just do that video since I have a lot of time. And so uh, here's what my shop looks like. If you can imagine a carport, um, here would be my car. Here's where we park our van. There's like a fence right here. And uh, so I pull the van out and I can get to work. And here's where I pretty much have everything. This is the cabinet from the Powered Up course. And of course you recognize the BMW here. Um, and the lumber cart and the vertical lumber storage. And what is at the back of my shed is basically like a little closet. And we rather than opening that door, we'll just kind of get a peek in here. And you can see all the different stuff that I've put in here. So I'm going to show you how to do something like this. Um, obviously, you would need to get dimensions for your own place. What I did is I just um, measured out my walls here in this door and was able to place all of these items in here. I did not recreate any of these. I used Steve's SketchUp files and just copied and pasted them directly into this document, which I will show you as I'm working through this. The reason I had YouTube pulled up when I first started the video was to show you this video. It's by a woodworker named Jay Bates. If you haven't watched any of his videos, you should watch all of them. He's very good. But this particular video on his uh, making cabinets using SketchUp, probably watched it five times. And then after the end of that was able to use SketchUp with enough skill that I can now make my own projects without much fuss. If there are some things that I need to accomplish that aren't within my skill set, then I'm able to just look it up. But for my purposes, that takes care of most of my needs. And so when you open up SketchUp, this is what you see. Now, this is the desktop version of SketchUp, but it is a free version of SketchUp. You can see here SketchUp Make 2017. That is the um, that is the version of SketchUp that is still free. And uh, there is a pro version. I don't know what the differences are. There's also a web-based version. Um, I do know that one of the big differences with the web-based version is that it's web-based, and so you don't have as much of the uh, easy, easy of saving things on your computer and that sort of thing. So uh, I strongly recommend if you're interested in SketchUp and you don't want to get the pro version or don't know why you would need the pro version, just get SketchUp Make 2017. It's free. And so that's what I'll use. And I'm going to pretend as if I didn't have a carport but had like a real shop. And so I'm going to draw the floor. Now, floor is usually a rectangle. So to draw a rectangle, I use... Uh, the rectangle tool, uh, which is probably this one. Uh, I don't know because I use hotkeys for everything. And so to make a rectangle, you will hit the R key. And as soon as you hit the R key, you're uh, able to draw this rectangle. Oh, I said that and let me do it again. Okay. And see how my cursor changed. And I'm able to draw this rectangle. Now, let's say I know that my rectangle has a particular, um, particular dimensions. I don't want to just draw random rectangle with weird dimensions. I want to draw my dimensions. Let's say that I have a 20 by 12 shop. And so then I'm going to draw a 12 feet. Um, notice I'm just writing the words or the letters, numbers 12. And then I put foot and then I'm going to put hit comma. And it's happening. You can see down there in the bottom right. And I'm entering those numbers in comma 20 feet. And I hit enter. And it makes my rectangle. Now in order to do it, I'm just, I'm zooming here. I'm just using my scroll uh, to move closer to that. I'm going to hold down my shift key and then push my middle mouse button and I can actually drag. And so I want to get close to this. Now you're like, that doesn't look very big. This is a strange little program. Uh, 
objects are not what they appear to be. So just trust the dimensions that we put in and it will be a lot better for you in that regard. Um, now, if I go to move this thing, it's going to be wonky on me. All right, move or anytime you need to reset, you're going to hit the space button. See how I selected that? I'm like, oh no, what do I want to do? Reset. I can reset. Uh, I'm at the rectangle tool. I don't want to draw rectangles anymore. I can hit space and reset. I can also hit control Z to undo anything that I've just did. And so that's important too. Now I want to move this rectangle. So I hit M to move and I can move it wherever I'd like. Now notice there are three axes here. There's a red, there's a green, and there's a blue. Red always goes one direction, green always goes the other direction, and it's an XY axis kind of thing, and then blue is always up down. And I want to move it along the green axis. Well, I can make it can kind of snap to, as you see there, or I can move it along the red axis, it kind of snaps, or I can move it along the blue, it'll snap eventually. If I want it to snap and I can tell it to snap, I can hit one of the arrow keys. I can hit the left arrow key and it will snap to green. I can hit the right arrow key and it will snap to red. I can hit the up arrow key and it will snap to blue. I don't want it to snap to anything. I just want to move it someplace. I'm going to undo what I just did so that it's level. And so I'm just moving here. Um, if I'd like to rotate, I can hold the middle mouse button and just move my mouse and rotate like this. Now, if I'd like my floor to have some dimension, I can do that, some depth. There's a tool called the push-pull tool. I'm not going to make any depth to that, but I want to show you how that works. If I hit P for push-pull, I can make this floor have some depth. All right, well, uh, I want to control the amount of depth. Notice if you look in the bottom right, you can see those increments going up. And if I really tried hard, I bet I could get it exactly at something, but I don't want to try hard. I want to do it easy. And so I'm going to make this have a three inch thickness. So I hit three. I didn't put an apostrophe, so it doesn't, it's not making it feet. It's just going to make it inches by default. And I hit enter and there's my three inch floor. All right. Now I don't want to do anything else to this. If I start grabbing it and pulling it, some weird stuff's going to happen. See, this is where people get frustrated with uh, SketchUp because they don't understand how they just did what they did and what the crap. What do I do? The first thing you need to do is undo both of those things. Now, how do I make it to where my floor won't do any of that weirdness? I'm going to triple click on my floor and notice how I've selected all of it. Now I'm going to hit G. G is a create a component. When you have a component, what it does is it, it kind of seals that thing for you. You can't mess it up anymore unless you purposefully undo it and so if you'd like you can name your components i never do i'm just going to create components so triple click g hit create now i have this nice component if i want to move it i can i can just hit move for it or m for move and now i can move this however i'd like if i decide later you know what my floor should be four inches thick i can double click on this thing and it brings up this component editor screen. Now I can push pull this and I just want to add one inch. It was already three inches, so I'm just gonna add one inch. I'm gonna type one, hit enter. Now it's four inches thick. I'm gonna hit space to reset. I'm gonna click over here off on the side. Now I have a four inch floor instead of a three inch floor. I can measure that if I'd like. There's a tape measure. You hit T for tape measure. And I can measure it to make sure, yes, it's four inches. And I can also measure to make sure that these are the correct dimensions that I previously put in. Absolutely, that's 240 inches, which is 20 feet. And this is 144 inches, which is 12 feet. So I have my 20 by 12 space. I'm not going to make all four walls. I'm just going to make two. So let's say I have, I'm gonna put some walls on here. Well, walls are rectangles, or walls are actually three dimensional objects, but they start with a rectangle. So I wanna put my, rectangle that's going to be flush with the wall. Now I know one of the dimensions, one of the dimensions is obviously 144 inches. So rather than entering 144 again, I could, if I want to, I could enter 144 by however thick the wall is going to be, right? Or I could just hit comma since 144 is, is already what I want it to be, but I'm going to, I could show you both of those things actually. So I want it to be 144 by 
say that my wall is three inches thick. It doesn't really matter how thick my wall is. And I made that little rectangle there. All right. Another way that I could do that is rectangle, R for rectangle. I'm going to snap it to this point over here. And I'm going to snap it to this other point. Now, that is exactly 144 inches. I know that. And so rather than hit 144 in again, I'm going to hit comma because that's assumed. I would already know that dimension. And three. All right now I'm going to hit space to reset. I'm going to hit push pull. I definitely want it to go four inches to the floor, right? Now I can snap to that other corner. Notice I've done that and we'll make those flush with one another. But I also want it to be higher. So the average wall is what, eight feet tall. And so I'm going to hit eight apostrophe. And that does that space bar to reset. Triple click. G, make a component. Now I have a wall. All right. I would like another wall. And so let's show you a different technique here. I want to make a copy of this wall. Rather than just making a new wall, I'm just going to make a copy of this one. And so in order to do that, I can hit M for move. And notice it pulls this wall up. Now it gives me some other options too. If I wanted to rotate this wall, I could do that. I don't really want to rotate that wall. So I'm going to control Z for undo. But I do want to make a copy. So I hit move. Then I'm going to hold down the control key. And I'm going to move. And now I have another wall. And I actually do want to rotate this wall now. And so I'm going to come up here to this axis. Notice I've got some different. And I want to rotate it. Now, if I want it to be lined up exactly, I could try hard to get it to 90. The program really will help you. Or I could just type 90, enter, and it goes right there. Now, I want these corner, this corner here to be flush with this corner. How can I do that? Well, I can hit M for move. I'm going to grab this corner. And I'm going to bring it over here to this corner. And it will snap. And that makes it nice. Now, what if, let's say that this wall was up here and over here. And I wanted to get it even. Now, I could really try hard to move it down there and try to fix it. And that's going to take me a while. Or I can grab this corner here. And I'm going to hit up the up arrow to make it just go on the blue axis. And then I'm going to select this corner down here. I'm not actually pushing a button. I'm just mousing over it. And that is constraining it to that point. What it's doing is it's making it even with that point. Now, those two points are exactly level. And so then I can just bring it to this point. Snaps to, hit space to clear, and notice my wall is not long enough. So how do I edit this one? Well, these two walls are the same thing. So if I edit one, the other one's also going to edit. This is helpful in another way. If you need to change like leg length of a table or something like that, notice I'm going to double click to enter component editor, and I'm going to change the length of this wall. Oh, both of them are lengthening. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to undo. Now, how can I do this? Well, I can right click on this component, and I'm going to make this component unique. Now, it will do things different than the other one. So I'm going to double click to edit, push pull, P to push pull, and I want it to come down to this edge. And so I'm going to just select that edge. I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just holding it over. And I'll click space to clear, click off, and here we go. Got two walls and a floor. And you get the idea here. Maybe you want a door. Well, how do we make a door? I'm going to, I want to edit this uh, component. And let's say that my door is over here on this uh, on this wall. And my door is three feet away from this corner. Well, get my trusty tape measure out, T for tape measure. And I'm going to go over three. I can get it exactly, or I can just hit 36, and it will tape me right there. And notice, nice little point there for me, a guide point. There's another tool that you can use you know, to help you with this. It's the line tool, so L for line. And I'm just going to draw lines. Now, again. I can try to find where they snap, or I can just hit the up arrow. It's going to snap me to blue. How long do I want this? I don't even know how, how high is the average door. Six and a half feet. Let's go with that. 66 inches. And they are what? 20, six, 36 inches wide. I think that sounds right. And then we'll go down. And now I have a door. Well, how do I cut my door out? Well, I can use the push-pull tool, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to push pull. I'm going to 
flipped wrong. I have to close my square off. My, close, my square is not closed off on the bottom, so I need to continue my line. There we go. Now I have a square, and I can push-pull. Notice how it selects that door separately. I'm still in Component Editor. Double-click to get there, and I just push-pull. Now, it's like, oh, it's making it crazy. But if I push-pull... Oh, there's a way to do this. Well, I can do it like that, and it goes away. I'll do that again, because I just selected it to that edge, and it went away. Now I have a hole in my wall, which is my door. And I'm going to get out of Component Editor space to reset and click off, and there I go. So I have my door, I have my walls, and I want to put some stuff in here. And I don't know what I want to put in here. So what I've done is I've taken the liberty to pull a few things up. And this is one of Steve's uh, files here. And this is what his SketchUp files look like if you've never looked in them. And he has the different things going on here. Here is the Rio storage rack. Now, when I get in here, I'm not actually doing any. There's a, It's a saved file. Uh, they're saved on his server. This one's saved locally on my computer. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to click all these dimensions. You may want them on yours. I don't want them on mine. So I'm going to click them all and I'm just hitting delete, click, delete, click, delete. Now I could select a bunch of them. You drag your triangle to the, or your square to the left, it will select a thing. If you drag it to the right, it only selects the part, the whole, or the things that you had completely enveloped. So notice I've completely enveloped just that one spacer thing. But if I click, if I drag to the left, it's going to select the whole thing. So that's one important tool as well. I'm just going to drag to the, here we go, get rid of those. Now I have this tool here, the whole thing. Now I don't want it to come in pieces. You know, I don't want to, you know, pull off that on accident. So one way that I can do this to make sure that I get the whole thing is I can right click, make a group. Now this thing is going to act as a single unit. Now I can't move it from one document to the next, so how am I gonna do this? I'm going to just click on it like I've done, make group, I'm gonna hit Control C to copy. I'm gonna click back here in my other document and I'm gonna hit Control V to paste. And now I have my Rio in my new shop. <coughs> so if I'd like to put it on my other wall here, I can rotate it or I can just put it up against this wall. Now, how do I put it up right up against the wall? This is tricky. So I want to grab this corner and I'm going to, I don't see how it's trying to go crazy on me. I want it to constrain to the red axis. So it'll go this way. And so I hit the right key and I'm going to, so it's already done that for me. But I, if I didn't, if it didn't, I could just hold this edge right here and it goes right up against the face. Now, what I did in my own shop is I made a double Rio, and let me find it. Uh, there it is, and as you can see here, I made the double Rio, and so I'm going to do that in this shop too, because why not, and it's a teachable moment, so let's have a teachable moment. I'm going to hit M for move, and remember, if I hold control, I can make a double of this thing. Now I've got two of these and I really want these two boards to be the same because there's no reason to have two of them. And so I want this corner here to be the same as this corner. So I'm just gonna click them together like that. Spacebar, click off, and now I have two Rios. I think you get this. Now, um, let's put some more things in here just to show. Here is the sanding station and Again, I'm going to get rid of these dimensions. You may want to keep them on there. It's up to you. Select that. Right-click, make group. Control-C to copy. And I'm going to put that over here on this wall. And so I'm going to hit Control-V to paste. Now, I'm going to make, I'm just going to set it down anywhere in my shop for now. Click off and see how I can move this around. So M to move. I'm going to grab this corner and I'm going to go with the green axis here. I'm selecting it on the face. Now I just want it to go up. So I'm going to hit up 
constraints, so it's only constrained to the vertical axis. And now I've got it here. Oh, I don't like it there. I want to move it, so I'm going to keep it on the uh, uh, red axis, and I'm going to move it there. So you get the idea. Maybe you're like, I don't want to make sure this is the right height, or do I have enough height? Well, I can measure. T for tape measure. How far is this to the ground? It tells me over here in the bottom right-hand corner that's 74 inches. So that's a little bit over more than six, seven feet. Okay, I want this thing to be exactly the top of it to be exactly six feet off the ground. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to move it. Ooh, I don't want to move my wall. So there we go. Select that, move. I'm going to put the corner down on the ground and. And now I'm going to select this. I want this to go to be exactly six feet. So I'm going to select the bottom. Actually, this is a little trickier. I need to find out how big this thing is. What is it? It is 24 inches, so it's two feet. I want the top to be six feet, and so I'm going to go up 48 inches. I'm going to move. And I'm constrain it to the vertical axis. I'm gonna hit 48, and there it goes. Six feet. And let's see what else I got. Uh, I have the BMW Plus. So here we go. We'll take this BMW Plus, and we'll go to these dimensions. Uh, select it. Right-click, make group. Control C to copy. Control V to paste and here it is in my shop and I got it up against the wall looks really nice and what else do I got oh yeah this was one thing I wanted to show you too so here's the mobile table saw cart a lot of people have made this uh, select it right click make group control C to copy control V to paste here it comes I need to Turn it around, M to move. I'm going to turn it around completely. And spacebar to clear, M to move, get it back to the face or to the wall here. And I want to put my table saw on that. Well, how do you do that? Here's this 3D warehouse up here. I have a DeWalt 7480 table saw. And I've never actually done this before, so let's see how this works. There it is. Well, there's the 7490, which is pretty close. There's the 7480. And not all of your tools are going to be on here, obviously. Um, so, But you can find some of them. This was an example of that. So I click on that. It's going to take me to the 3D warehouse and show me that thing. That's one thing you can do. Or you can just click the picture i believe and it comes right in. <laughs> it was kind of sneaky came from behind there it'll come right to your cursor and now i have this table saw and so i can do things with it just like i could with any other object right i can move it around uh, i can make sure it's nice and flush this one's rounding in my floor a little bit so i'm gonna pick it up All right. Now, one cool thing was this. Someone made this. Obviously, it's much better at this than I am. Uh, I want to, it's currently in a group. I want to edit this group so I can actually explode that object. And I can manipulate the individual pieces of it. Notice that. So, for instance, I want to move my fence over so that it is flush with everything else so it looks nice and square. So I'm going to select that. This is a little trickier. And I'm going to keep it on the red. And I'm just going to move it over till it's nice and flush. Bar to clear. Now I'm going to select this whole thing again. And I'm going to make it a group again so that I can't 
do that. Screw it up. And now I'm going to put it on top of my table salt cart. So how do I do that? I'm going to move and I'm going to select the bottom of that little leg. And I want it to be flush with the top of my table saw cart. So I'm going to hit the vertical button and I'm going to put it right there. Now it's the same height. I just need to get it over there. So I'm going to take one of these little feet and just kind of shift it over there like so. And it is perfect. So space to get off that and click off. And now I have my nice little table saw cart. And I think this is good enough. Do you understand kind of what's going on here? You could do this over and over. You could do this with all of his projects. You could make another BMW Plus. I want two of these in my shop. Click on it, uh, M to move, hold down control. I've got two now. You get the idea. Um, and you can manipulate these, the SketchUp files as well. I want this BMW to have a longer top, so I'm going to explode this particular um, piece and I need to edit these this tabletop here so I'm gonna double click component edit push pull actually it looks like I need to explode this further I do because this is this tabletop is its own group as well so I explode it further and now I have this so and it needs to be exploded even further there's groups within groups now you can see I can just select that one slab right click or double click push pull and it's going to be i want it to be i don't know two feet longer you get the idea i may not want it that long but you get the idea you can do that if you want that's your thing so i want to undo that because you know i don't want that to do i can actually delete this but it's i need to make it a group again i'm just going to undo until it all becomes a group again I'll just undo it like that. So that's Control Z to undo. I think you get the idea. So um, again, I hope that was helpful. I've just learned most of this by messing around. And again, by watching that J Bates video, just search J Bates SketchUp and you will find it on YouTube. Hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.